Hey everyone. Uh, as some of you know, I had a really bad bout of uh, heel bursitis and Achilles issues earlier this year. It took me out for several months to the point that I could barely jog two or three miles. Uh, ended up getting PRP, but thought I'd share some of the shoe hacks I've been doing to relieve the pressure on there, which has let me run both uh, during that and then especially after it's helped a lot with my recovery. So when it first happened, I really went aggressive and the first pair of shoes that I modified, I just chopped the crap out of. Uh, so you can see the inside is still intact, so you have a nice soft feel, uh, but the outside I cut from the heel collar all the way off. And then in the back, I just started chopping more and more material until the only thing that's left is this little bit of foam that gives a little bit of structure and it really reduced all the pressure. The only problem is, this doesn't really let me run in it. Uh, you try to run even flats and your heel just slips right out of it because there's just not enough tension there. Uh, but walking around, uh, especially when I wasn't able to run, when I was just starting to recover, uh, this was great. And if you've got an old pair of shoes, especially one that you can tell is like soft and plush inside, uh, this is a great way to start out if your heel bursa or if anything back there, your Achilles just really can't take any pressure. So next I moved on and uh, as you may also know, I jumped right into the Hard Rock 100 five weeks after my PRP injection and finished it successfully. And this is the shoe I did it in. So just like the first one, I chopped off the entire top that stops pressure from going into your Achilles tendon, uh, which normally when that heel counter is going in there, even if it's soft, it's putting more tension on just the whole lower chain there and pulling against the heel bursa, which makes it rub worse. So I knew I needed to take all the pressure off that. And so far I haven't actually found this uh, compromises the fit much at all. I pretty much do this on every shoe I own now uh, because that's the minimum that you want to do. Uh, but what I did while I was uh, had the shoe open, I just literally cut the stitching so that I had this material to reattach back onto uh, the rear of the shoe so that it's not exposed anymore. But while it was open, I pulled apart the uh, inside cloth material and the outside, and it exposes that middle foam, but it also exposes the heel counter. And so what I did, you can see on this side, which is the, uh, the side that's fine on my heel, the heel counter is really rigid in there. Uh, but on this other side where my heel bursa uh, issue is, I just cut the heel counter out in like a U shape right around where it would be. And so this is completely soft from both sides and that allows the heel bursa to really uh, breathe in there, so to speak, and it takes almost all the pressure off. Uh, I still kept the shoes a little bit loose just to really make sure it didn't pull against it, but I was able to get a pretty secure fit without putting any additional pressure on it and it worked for a hundred mountain miles for me. So this is really the approach that I've taken since there. Uh, I just used a little bit of shoe goo to reattach the extra material so that it closes it up, uh, along with some safety pins or just anything really to attach it on there. You can use binder clips. And that really attached it. I haven't had any issues with this since. So from there, I, I tried a bunch of other things. Some worked better than not, so I'll just jump into those two. Uh, this, I tried to remove the entire heel counter. Uh, which really makes the shoe soft. Uh, I don't like this shoe in general, it just didn't work for me. Uh, but if you really wanna get aggressive for it, uh, or you're, you maybe have more issues down in your heel area, uh, there's nothing to stop you from ripping out entire heel counters. I'm sure it will mess with the fit a little bit. It might even put pressure on different spots, uh, but it's something that if it comes to it, you can really take out all the structure in the back, all the rigidity, uh, without compromising the rest of the shoe. It's honestly a bit of a pain to do, especially some of them are really attached down low, uh, but a bit of elbow grease and technique and you can get there. Some of my other shoes have had to make less drastic uh, modifications, uh, like some of the racing flats that I have, like this Puma DV8 Nitro Elite, it had no heel counter to begin with. So all I had to do was that same modification of just chopping off the top and this shoe's worked great for me. Uh, if you wanna get real fancy, uh, I've sewed a few of the shoes back together, which gives it just a little bit of a cleaner look. Uh, I don't normally do this just cause it's a pain. It takes a while, it's a lot of effort and usually it doesn't matter that much. I'm not trying to wear these fashionably, but that's also an option if you want, if you don't wanna be gluing stuff, if you don't want to have it look sloppy, you can always sew it back together. Uh, and then finally, there's quite a few shoes I've had that just have a naturally lower heel counter. 
So the, the rigid part comes below where my heel bursa is. And so I still do the same modification on the top, but I don't have to worry about chopping out the heel counter itself. I can just glue the material back down because it's already soft enough up top that there's not really a lot of pressure there. So hoping this helps someone. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, but so far, it's good to experiment on some old shoes first. But once I get the hang of it, it's really not too bad. And I've been doing it to all of my newer shoes just precautionarily as I'm still recovering and coming back. And I've been able to run as much as ever without any issues. Thanks for watching.